This episode of Congratulations is brought to you by Blue Apron, and that is the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. For less than $10 per person per meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. Blue Apron knows you're busy, so now they're offering 30-minute meals, which is great. It's great for me because these meals are made with the same flavor and farm-fresh ingredients you know and love and are ready in 30 minutes or less. I don't have time, neither do you, so this is a good thing. If you don't have it, get it. Check out this week's menu and get your first three free uh, get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash congrats. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. This episode is also brought to you by the Cash App. You got to get this thing. I don't know if you've seen this, but the Cash App has done something amazing. They've introduced the Cash Card. It's a new black debit card that you can design yourself via the app. It's very cool. I've seen it and I like it. The cash card allows you to use the cash that you keep in the app anywhere you want. It's really awesome. I'll talk about this more later on in the show. Uh, Download the free cash app for iOS or Android now. What's up, my babies? How are you? It's Congratulations, the podcast. We're back. We introduced something new this uh, this past week uh, of the Maurice Micklewhite episode. If you haven't heard it, uh, it is the uh, that that is the name of <laughs> Michael Caine. I tell you, I've thought more. Uh, that's Michael Caine's real name. I've thought more about Michael Caine this week than I ever have in my entire life, and because of how hard I was laughing in the last episode and about Michael Caine's website. And so many people were tweeting me stuff about Michael Caine's website. And one thing I did not mention last week was that when you click on the pictures of Michael Caine's gallery, they're the fucking same size as they are already as the thumbnails. Eh, Fix it. So, um, yeah. And But we introduced something new, and that is the video. So if you're just listening to this, go back and start last week and watch the video of the podcast. And it starts with episode 32. So uh, we're trying it out. We're seeing if you like it. Uh, so far, the the it's been a positive, um, whatever, uh, positive feedback about it. And uh, I'm just trying to grow this thing, man. If you're not helping me grow it, you're stalling. And what I mean is you're stalling, not Stalin the general or whatever he was, but uh, you're stalling the, the, the growth of my cult. Of, you know what? You're stalling the growth of our cult. And that's not cool. You know, if you're not growing, you're stalling. If you're stalling, you're dying, okay? Um, Now, I am fresh off of the plane uh, from uh, uh, Tempe, Arizona. I was in Phoenix and Tempe, uh, which is should be the same goddamn thing. Phoenix and Tempe, the same place. It's the exact same place. You step one way, Phoenix. You step another way, Tempe. It's the same goddamn place. And I love, I think Tempe, if I had to narrow it down, but and I'm not talking about New York, Boston, LA, you know, big, although Phoenix is a big city, but when you're talking about like the coastal cities, I always like going there because it makes me feel like if I need to and shit went down, I can get on a ship and go somewhere else, even though would never do it, would never be on a ship. Uh, but if some shit went down, I could, I have the option, have the option, but, um, I think I would say Tempe is my favorite place to go perform. The crowds are always awesome. And the Tempe improv specifically is just great. The crowds are awesome. And this weekend especially was the crowds were awesome. They were just great. They were jacked. I have a lot of new material. And I'm building it so it's like, it's making me feel good. I'm feeling good about performing again. Not that I didn't earlier, but I got, you know, I was doing that Man on Fire uh, uh, set for so long that now it feels good to like do new shit and get it going and discover what I want to talk about now. I don't know if it'll be part of my next special, but it's fun to talk about. Uh, It's fun to do it and fun to figure it out. And it makes me feel like, uh, I don't know, you have to start all, all over from scratch, so... 
I did that in Tempe. I played also Phoenix Stand Up Live. Um, Tempe was so hot, man. It's so hot even now in September, but I mean, I guess it's still tech, like not technically summer, but it, or I guess you don't know. But um, it's summer-ish, and there it's definitely summer. It's too hot, man. And I've said this before, but don't be that hot and and not have boa constrictors around, okay? Because it's too hot. And, uh, and it's such a college town, which is cool that they come out to the show, but it's really annoying how much they love their football. And let me, you know, straight up, you could, okay, for sure, uh, if you like that much football, um... They're the dev- they're the sun devils or some fucking dumb shit like that, you know? Sun devils? I don't know. Are they the sun devils? Hey, you know? Fuck is that? You can't just like put two words together and make it cool like that. Now you're the sun devils. And then all these fucking people are like, fucking go, sun devils. You know? In a in a fucking arena. Uh but yeah. And yellow and maroon are their colors. Eh, Sugly. You McDonald's? Dude, you gonna give me fries and a Big Mac? No? Cool. Change your colors. You making me hungry. Uh, is it called Frank Cush Field? <laughs> yeah, dude. Hey, dude. It's Frank Cush Field, dude. No. Uh I don't I wouldn't want a statue of me. Period. Anywhere. You know how people are like, "Oh, we get immortalized." That seems like some old school shit. I guess there's a fucking I guess that's him. There's a, a statue of of some fucking football player in bronze uh on Arizona State. I wouldn't I wouldn't want it. Is as, as famous as you you could be as a comedian and I don't even know there are probably some statues of some comedian somewhere, but that that's just like some old school shit that they would do, you know? Like, ah, we would immortalize you with a stone statue. Like, go fucking fuck off. Just remember me, dude. Put me on the internet somewhere. You know? That you know like like the copper benches that they have? And then they'll have like a fucking guy sitting on the bench, like a fucking copper part of the bench, like he was made fucking with flames and fire. And they put a guy with a business suit on the bench and like he's like reading a paper or some goddamn shit. Like, what are you doing, dude? You know what I want on that bench instead of that guy? More room. Because if there's fucking three people sitting on the bench and then I got to watch some wrought iron bullshit motherfucker that was honored by sitting on this bench that I have no fucking idea who it is and I got to eat my fucking salad standing up and I can't sit down and eat it on my lap at this beautiful park that I should be enjoying myself leisurely at, then you know what? Remove the statue. Statues don't get to sit. They're statues. They don't need to rest. Bye. I want a fucking statue in my bed. Just laying down. So I can cuddle with a fucking wrought iron dude that like built an important fucking building somewhere. Also, how many of them are ass so bad, dude? How many of them have... Remember the Ronaldo one? Where he was like... Dude, he was so, I mean, dude, cross-eyed. All of his features too close together. And also doesn't look like him at all. Dude, when they when they photoshopped his face to look like the statue, that was the best. When they kept doing it over and over again. God damn, whoever did that literally should have fucking killed themselves. They probably also got death threats over that. There's no way. You can't do anything negative about soccer and not receive death threats. People from Barcelona will be like, hey, why are you you fucking around, huh? Why are you fucking around? We impale you. Don't don't make statues anymore. Just, it's not... And and then there's all the other shit where now they want to pull them down about the fucking... You know. Dude, if I had a statue... 
when they're trying to pull down the fucking racist statues or whatever the fuck, and they're like, no, that's our history. Like, they're fucking statues, dude. You know? It's a statue. You know what they should have done? They should have taken those statues of fucking Robert E. Lee or whatever was it? Was that who it was? And fucking bended his knees and just sat him on a fucking park bench. So near in a racist town, so racists couldn't sit down at their park. That's what they should have done. And they would have been like, oh, man, I'd love to sit down, but we got a fucking painting. We got a, 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 a fucking wrought iron Robert E. Lee sitting down. We got to see. We got to respect that. Why don't we sit on his lap and eat our salad? Our fried salad. They'll fry anything in the South. They'll be like, you ever tried fried fucking cereal? You're like, huh? You try it. You'll see. You ever try fried bacon? Yeah. Yeah. Well, have you ever tried fried ice cream? Huh? Well, you try it. You'll see. You ever tried fried ice cream? How's that work? You fry a fucking ice cream. Yeah, but how's it work? Because it's cold. You just fucking do it. Oh, cool. You ever fucking sign a fried document? <laughs> it lawyer, we got fucking, we'll lawyer up and make you sign a fried document. Fuck yeah. You'll sign a goddamn fried document. You ever put on a fried suit? <laughs> what? Hell yeah. You're looking tastier than a motherfucker, boy. With your fried tie and fried suit. Fried belt. Fried fucking loafers. Put on this fried top hat. Boy, you're looking tastier than a motherfucker. Oh, boy, you're looking tasty. Put on this fried mon monocle. What do you call it, fucking monocle? Put on a fried monocle. Yeah, you get that grease in your eye, boy. You look, your eyes looking tastier than a motherfucker. I don't know how I started talking about ASU and wound up on fried monocle. But, uh, dude, ASU, you know? Is there more of a college college than ASU? Sun devils, dude. Fucking sun devils. Uh, and, and I walk down Mill Street, which is like the street where all the college kids are. And uh, there's like that. I love the college towns that have that college shop where like you can buy anything, but it has the mascot on it. You know, like literally you can buy shirts or pants or like shoes or hats, but also a fucking like like condoms with like a fucking badger on it, you know? And or like a like a notebooks and textbooks and you'd have like the born identity trilogy with a fucking badger on it. You'd be like, "Come on, yeah, get the Blue Devils Born trilogy." Get the, oh, they got the number one fingers. God damn, those number one fingers, dude. Wh whoever fucking made that big ass foam number one finger is equally as genius as they are fucking m the biggest moron of all time. To even think of that idea, you got to be dumb as shit, but then also capitalize on other people's dumbness to get that fucking finger. If you're over, if you're under, you know, 14, fine. But if you're fucking 30 or 50 and you have one of those foam like that, what you doing with your life? You live life wrong. And you know what? Deep down, you know it. So here's what you do. You take that finger... You water it up real nice. You fucking stick it in a pool or you run it under the, st the sink. You put it in the freezer. You let it harden up. Then you take it out hours later or the next day, you put it directly on the ground and then you sit on it. Let that cold finger go right up Yanus. Don't do. Don't have the foam finger. If you do, it should be up your ass because that's what you deserve. Let that foam finger go directly. Let that hard foam frozen finger go directly up your ass because that's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. Um, 
Oh, man. I don't like rooting. You know? I don't like rooting. Hey, hey, here we go. No. Hey, hey, here we go. Uh, 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 uh. We can. You can stop us. No one can. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. You can stop us. No one can. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. People can stop you. Armies. Bunch of strong guys can stop you. Bunch of stronger guys can stop you. Chemical warfare can stop you. Hey, you can't stop us. No one can. And then fucking fighter jets just. Oh my God. I guess we're stopped. I guess we're stopped. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. He's missing his leg. Fucking dumbass cheerleaders. You can't stop us. No one can. Oh God. Oh God. He can't stop. Oh my God. He's stopping us. You're in the middle of stopping, stopping us. Oh my God. Oh my God. Katie's holding her stomach. Her stomach's coming out. You can't stop us, no one can, except fighter jets and giants. Giants can stop us. Dude, I don't like that whole fucking, you can't stop us, bears can. It literally, bears could. If bears came and ate us up, the bears could stop us. That's my cheer, dude. I would have a fucking, I'm going to want to get a college just so I can fucking get real good football players. Real good football players. Maybe we're number three or some shit. Or like... By the way, fuck all these divisions. You know what I mean? Oh, yay, we're Division 2. We're Division 1. We're Division 3. Nah, fuck that. Get rid of divisions. All play each other. Don't give a fuck, okay? Play each other. You're Division 1. You're Division 5. If you're Division 5, you suck cock. You're in Division 1, and you're f- and you're 170th place. That's what you are. That's what you are. And then fucking, I want to get a, a football team. I want to get a college. I want to get a football team. And then I want, wow, I really, I, I don't even have a fucking clue what I was trying to get at. And then, and then, oh, and I want to have, oh, oh, that's what I want. I want to have the cheerleaders and I want the cheerleaders to be fucking, you know, really good at what they do and doing all the twists and doing the one thing where you flip up the there's guys too where they flip up the girl and hold them on one foot for some reason even though it's not necessary even though you never need to do that and then um and then and then i want the cheers to be like we can almost not be stopped we are number three in the league there are a few things gets that can stop us and then one girl's like bears and then the other girl goes, fighter jets. And then the other one goes, chemical warfare. <laughs> then the one goes like, if we didn't have enough oxygen. And then the fucking idiots with the big fucking golden helmets with that fucking, what is this thing? This fucking, the Spartan. There's always some fucking, even if it's not, you're not the Spartans. There's some asshole with a fucking French horn that's like, rum, 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 rum. And he's got a fur fucking helmet. And there's a dumb, goofy badger just like jumping around. Hey, how fucking dumb is what I'm describing? And here's the worst part. It's real. It's not a dream. I'm not describing a dream I had. People cheering around. You can't stop us. No one can. And a big, goofy fucking badger doping around. And people with number one finger hands foam. And then some fucking guys playing the French horn. And then guys fucking come out and burst out of paper. Not impressive. When they fucking burst out of paper and they're not impressive. And then you got the fucking band leader. Hey, band leader, don't need you. Hey, band leader, grab an instrument. Get behind everyone. The guy who just steps. Who fucking, and maybe he's got a flute or some dumb shit. Try harder. What the fuck is that? What is this? What is that guy? Ohio State drum major tryouts. Hey, dude, don't try out that. Just pick someone. Also, don't have it at all. What is he doing? Drum major? Oh, oh, it's so hot on the ground. So hot on the ground. 
He's stepping so hard. Look at this asshole. This guy's got parents. Look at this guy. He's got parents, dude. I'm looking at a guy, if you're not watching the video, twirling around a baton so casually, dude. Like, he's literally twirling it around like, not doing nothing, not doing nothing at the end of it. Oh, man. Can you do that and be straight? I mean, I, I mean, you could, and it's happened before. But how about that? What is that? What do they call like color guards? Oh man, he does fantastic moves. You know what my favorite thing is when it, when when the drum major, like drum major shit, or even when a guy's playing drums. One of the funniest things to me is imagine no music, no sound anywhere except you can hear him, and he's going. <laughs> drum major is the band leader. Hi, bye. Hey, you're a band leader. Bye. You don't need to lead the band. Just have the guys play the instruments and trolley all around. It doesn't matter, dude. We are number one. Nothing can really stop us. You know when they throw the fucking baton up so high and they have to look at it and watch it like a bitch until they catch it? What are you doing? What are you doing? What you doing with your lie? That's amazing, actually, to be a band leader. And where... A cape. Dude, and wear the Pope's hat. What the fuck? If you have any feathers on you, just run yourself through a car wash. You know? You got gold ropes on your head? Put them around your neck. Tie him on a pole, jump bar. I mean, all right, enough of this shit. But yeah, man, I mean, w w I just described something that's a real thing. Like not dreams. Like is, 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 is like, stop rooting. I don't know. It is what it is. Um, But all that fucking... And people like what what, I, what kills me is like like it's so alpha to fucking be like sports fuck yeah fuck yeah but that's not alpha it's so secretly beta if you're fucking rooting for sports it's beta and it's fine to do it but you're beta you're not an alpha you beta. Because you're rooting for other dudes to run it through the fucking goal line. Also, you're playing a game. Even if you're playing, you're playing a game that other people created. It's not alpha. You secretly beta. You know who the fucking true alphas are? Crazy people. Fucking insane motherfuckers. That are like screaming in coffee shops. Nobody's doing that shit. You're the man. Guys that are just fucking in like Ikea, just like, there's no more tree bark. Just like an insane motherfucker. Science is everywhere. Science is everywhere. That guy is a fucking alpha. Oh, you think he's going to pick up a ball and get teammates? Man, get the fuck out of here with your beta shit. That guy's the man. He's alpha. A guy that'll just fucking take his pants down and pull on his cock in like an in and out burger. That guy's the shit. He's alpha, dude. Um, yeah. You're alpha and you're out there fucking, you know, in the locker rooms just fucking... What do we want? Where we want it? Where we want it? Where we want it? Who do we want? Where we want it? We gotta fuck. We gotta run. Fuck me in the butt. You need to behind me. Get in the butt. Put it inside me. Run in the butt. Is it gonna run in the butt? You say put it inside me? Uh, no. Touchdown. Oh, okay. Well, oh, fuck yeah. It sounds like I, I was beaten up by like football players. I wasn't. I just fucking. I'd rather be the guy screaming out in a coffee shop, there's no more tree bark or science is everywhere, than throwing a ball to my teammate. Um, yeah. And uh, and that's what's up. I don't, any song, 
You know what songs are the worst? This is, I was watching fucking, I'm so tired of the fucking shows on TV, especially network TV, when it's like, when the music dictates how you're supposed to feel about the scene, when it's like two doctors are flirting with each other, but it's like light flirting and nobody died in the episode yet because it's the fucking 25th minute in, and it's like, and the girl's like trying to flirt, but her fucking hair's messed up. Hey, Ken. Hey, how's it going, Carla? Oh, nothing. Um, oh, about that surgery, huh? Sure. Yeah, good thing you didn't die, huh? Uh, yeah, we're doctors. And then the other nurse walks up. That was your best try, huh? Yeah, she just goes and blows her fucking hair off her face. Oh, fuck that. That's been a scene 75 times. It's been a scene in every doctor show. Hey, 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 Ken. Oh, whoops. Uh, Love getting in the way of cars. <laughs> it's kind of a thing here. Uh, yeah, okay, Carla. Strack two. That's the fucking nurse that walks up. She's always watching. <laughs> Uh, hey, <laughs> so, great food here at the cafeteria, huh? Uh, yeah, I guess, if you like uh, frozen meat. Yeah, no, I mean, I didn't really mean it, I just... Carla, you sure don't say what you, you, what you mean a lot. <laughs> yeah, Ken, no, I know, it's kind of like one of my things. Whoops, drops the tray. I have ketchup on my shirt. Then the nurse walks up. You gonna eat that? Fuck off, dude. You can't do it. No one can. The cheerleaders are there. You got ketchup on your fucking shirt. You can't do it. No one can. Another person could do it, but this is the script. Fighter jets over the hospital. Come on, dude. Try harder. Stop being formulaic. Bye. Can a baby drink you? Stop being formulaic. <laughs> Can a newborn drink you? Stop being formulaic. Ah, shit, man. Here we go. Me undies. Look, you want to look good in your underwear, right? And you want to be comfortable. Cool. Check, check. But that perfect balance is hard to find. It's hard to find. Don't sacrifice style or comfort. Check out MeUndies.com and find the best pair of underwear in the world. MeUndies will be the most comfortable pair of underwear you will own. Take it from me. I'm telling you, I got them. They are. They're made from sustainably sourced, naturally soft fabric that is three times softer than cotton. You put it on, feels like butter around your midsection, Okay. For the fellas, MeUndies diamond seam pouch cradles your jewels and gives your stuff the support it needs without feeling too tight, okay? You can still breathe. Right now, MeUndies has an exclusive offer just for my listeners. Get 20% off your first pair and free shipping. Satisfaction guaranteed. Money back if you don't like them. MeUndies is sure you'll love their underwear. They even offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee, all right? So it's a no-brainer. Try 20% off free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee. What you waiting for, huh? Do it. You get 20% off free shipping and their 100% satisfaction guarantee. MeUndies.com slash congrats. That's MeUndies.com slash congrats. Limited time offer. What are you waiting for? Start wearing the best underwear of your life. It honestly changed my life in the underwear department. It's time to get MeUndies to change yours. Go to MeUndies.com slash uh, congrats right now. Blue Apron is the number one fresh ingredient and delivery, uh, uh, a recipe delivery service in the country. Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone. And guess what? They did it. 
They set the highest standards for ingredients, and they build a community of home chefs. You want to be one? Be one. Blue Apron has established partnerships with over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States. As a result, seafood, beef, chicken, pork, produce, it's all raised and made better. Blue Apron ships the exact amount of each ingredient required for a recipe, so it's easy. You guys can do this. Upcoming meals are summer vegetable and egg paninis with Calabrian chili mayonnaise and caprese salad, garlic butter shrimp and corn with green bean salad and roasted purple tomatoes. Can't say it without m- mouth watering. That's just some of the stuff. Uh, Blue Apron knows you're busy, so they're offering 30-minute meals, which is what I like. These meals are made with the same flavor and farm-fresh ingredients you know and love and are ready in 30 minutes or left- less. So uh, check out this week's menu and go to your first, th- get your first three free meals f- uh, with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash congrats. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. Blueapron.com slash congrats. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. A guy likes a girl, rink. You know, it's what it is. But that's how it is. Musical kit, musical get you. You know what the best... the the war, I think... How about when people... Like, you know what's so funny is at a, and so out of style is crooning. But there's still always like that one guy that like makes it. You're a dame. I'm just a guy. I love how like, oh, shucks they are. I'm just a guy. Like, yeah, we know, man. You're just a guy. What do we think? You were a fucking transformer? No metal parts. Just a guy. You're a gal. If any song calls someone a gal, sexist. I love how underlyingly sexist crooning is you know i am a guy i matter more than you get under me on your knees start gargling start gargling Put my nuts in your mouth, start gargling. You're a girl, you matter less than me. Put me above you, <laughs> start gargling. <laughs> gargle, gargle, you're gonna wanna keep on gargling. Gargle, gargle, if you stop, I'll put you in the basement. <laughs> Put on the fluffy dress. Don't show too much ankle or you're a bitch. (laughs) Oh, my God. If you show another guy your knees, if you show another guy your knees, you're a goddamn whore. Gargle, gargle. I'm taller and much stronger. We're under... And they don't start that way, you know? They start beautiful. We're... (laughs) We're both on a veranda under the Paris moon. One look in your eye... (laughs) One look... One look in your eyes, I realize I'm just a guy. You're a gal, cook for me, bitch. Gargle, gargle, get inside, let me look at the moon some more. Gargle, gargle, I need alone time, make me some sausage, bitch. Give me starches and carbs now. Gargle. We don't know the health benefits of eating greens. Give me brown food. Give me beige food. That's all I'm eating. This is the 40s. (laughs) 
Oh, you're cooking standing up? Why are you doing that? Get lower, bitch. Get lower, bitch. I matter more. Your cheeks are rosy. Keep them pink. Keep them pink. If not, I'll give you light taps on the cheek. <laughs> That's mo The songs were so sexist back then, dude. Get in a line. I'll pick my mate. Let me go to work and so use socialize, read a book or something, but don't get too smart. Gargle, gargle. I'll put you in your place if you tell me something in public. Like the croon and shit. But now it can't be like that, you know, because you got like Mar Michael Buble that so secretly wants to be that way, but isn't that way, you know? Like he can't sing about the real shit, so he'll just be like... You're lovely. Like, that'll be a song. It's just called You're Lovely. Her eyes, her hair. She's lovely. I wish I was singing about something else. She's lovely. You're the only one right for me. And you could see in his in his face just like, Goddamn fucking shit. Is there any... It was Harry Connick Jr. Remember when chicks loved Harry Connick Jr.? Because that, mu that's, that music was so out of... Um, uh, out of fashion. And then he came in with his like scruffiness and his like goofy but also handsome ass shit. And girls were like, oh my God. He's just singing about me. But secretly he was singing, gargle, gargle. You know? Hey, his name's Harry Connick Jr., you know? Remember when he was in some fucking movies like Hope Floats? Never watched that movie. That name of that movie, Hope Floats, Hope Floats, dude. It might as well be named The Diarrhea Chronicles. That's the worst title of any fucking... And I've never seen the movie. No clue what it's about. I guarantee somebody has a disease in it. And it's like fucking so... It's like sad. Look at what it's about. Is an... Uh, Birdie, which is her name in it, which fucking gargle, gargle, don't have a lead character named Birdie. It's too cute. No one would be named that. And if every if anybody was named that in real life, everyone would hate him. Fuck that name. G Birdie, you fucking dumb fuck. Somebody wrote down Birdie. Okay. Sandra Bullock is an unassuming housewife. Oh, that's weird. They made a movie about somebody unassuming whose life is disrupted. When her husband, Michael Pear, Pare, reveals his infidelity to her on a Ricky Lake style talk show. Oh, okay. She goes home to her mother, Jenna Rollins, and the small town in which she grew up, where everyone knows of her televised marital collapse. Meanwhile, an old friend, Justin Connick Jr., of course he's the, has entered her life sparkling romance. While Justin's intentions are clear and good, Birdie struggles with the decision to let him fully into her life. And one of them is for sure dying. Even though it's not happening, they didn't, they cut that part out. Somebody was fucking dying of like, you know. Oh, there we go. Right there. There we go. Right there. She also tries to rebuild her relationship with her estranged mother, her ailing fa father who suffers from Alzheimer's disease. And we knew it because it was predictable. So gargle, gargle. And, and you know there's a scene where he's on the fucking hospital bed and he's like, Birdie, you got to let him open. You got to let him in. You got to let him in. You're only doing yourself an injustice. Gargle, gargle. And then Harry Connick made a song. And, and Harry Connick, how much was he just... I would... I, he's probably not. He seems like such a good guy. But I just wish he was a deviant. Just singing stuff like... Your eyes, they remind me of big, beautiful blue boulders. And then at night, he was just like... <laughs> I don't care who I fuck. It doesn't matter. I just want to have big tits. <laughs> that would be so funny to me. 
Oh man, you know. All these fucking movies that 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 Harry Connick Jr. was in was about him and a woman who was was either ailing or had an ailing fucking cousin or dad or some shit. And now he's got a show called the Harry Connick Jr. Show, and it's the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. They'll be like, "We got a guy who plays the piano on coming on later," and then the guy will play the piano and will be like, "What the oh?" And then other people will be like, ah, ha, 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 ha. "In the housewives, just like." Ha, ha, and he's like, well, he put them keys like that. And he'll just fucking kick his leg up. And then the house will just be, ah, ha, 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 ha. They have to go home and change their pants because they're all wet. Because he made them. Because he turned them on. Because the husband's always working. And they want to be with that goofy, scraggly, hair, face-haired fucking crooner. When even though he's fucking probably at home just like. <clears throat> and then he wakes up. Ah, oh, beautiful day. Get out, bitch. Go! Gargle, gargle. Um, no, he honestly seems like a fucking great guy for real. I'm just, I'm just having some fun, just having a laugh. He was an Independence Day. Um, the first one, and then they remade it 20 years later. Uh, and he wasn't in it, but uh, yeah, but that, and then, the, and then, ah, uh, fuck, man. <sighs> you heard about this tracker app? Tracker. It's everything. Wallet, phone, keys, wallet, phone, keys. Why does leaving the house always turn into the world's most annoying scavenger hunt? I hate it. I can't find stuff. Eight years ago, Tracker changed everything when they released their first tracking device, and now they've done it again with the all-new Tracker Pixel. You'll never worry about losing your things again. You could put them on anything. Tracker Pixel is the lightest Bluetooth tracking device on the market. You put it on whatever you intend to lose. Keys, wallets, you can't. You can put it on. It's small enough to fit anywhere. When you misplace an item that has Tracker Pixel attached, use your smartphone and a 90 decibel alert will help you find it in seconds. It even has powerful LED lights so you can find anything even in the dark. You lose your phone, just press the button, phone rings, even if it's on silent. Locate your item if it's miles away. Every tracker uses user is a part of the largest crowd locate network in the world. 30 days money back guarantee. You got nothing to lose. Get the tracker.com slash congrats. Go to tracker, go to the tracker.com slash congrats. It's the tracker.com slash congrats and get 20% off any order. That's the T H E T R A C K R.com slash congrats for 20% off the tracker dot com slash congrats square cash everyone is switching to the cash app because it's literally the best way to pay people back friends family co-workers harry connick jr it doesn't matter michael buble sending and receiving money is totally free and fast and most payments can be deposited into uh, your bank account directly in seconds you download the Square Cash app. You link your debit or credit card. Select an amount to send and type in a friend's phone number or email address to complete a payment and they'll get a notification that they just received money. That's it. No gimmicks. Square Cash is better than the other apps. It is. It's not a social network, all right? You don't need to have people know when you're paying somebody back for sushi, right? Now let's talk about this new uh, cash card. It's a new black debit card that you can design yourself via the app. You're creative, you can do it yourself. Uh, the cash card allows you to use the cash that you keep in the app anywhere you want. You'll get notifications for all payments made with the card directly via the cash app. You can laser etch your card to personalize it, and it will be delivered directly to you for free. You like laser etching, or you or you like some guy who doesn't like laser etching? I like everything that has to do with laser, lasers, so... Do this with me. The Cash App team is constantly building awesome new features also. So if you thought this laser etch thing was the end, yeah, right. It's beginning. What are you doing using the other guys? Get Cash App today. Switch like I did. Download the free Cash App for iOS or Android now. If not, then you know what you can do. Gargle, gargle. You know what the worst kind of music is, though? I think, period, scatting. What is it? What are you doing? You just feeling it? Hey man, you're a fucking fool. 
Wee bitty wee when they do that one. Wee Yana swing set. Scat singing. Vocal jazz. Vocal jazz. Take everything about jazz that's amazing. Remove it. Wordless vocables. Vocal improvisation with wordless vocables. Nonsense syllables. This is from Wikipedia. Or without words at all. In scat singing, the singer improvises melodies and rhythms using the voice as an instrument rather than a speaking medium. A.K.A. the dumbest fucking thing you can do. Wow. Imagine somebody doing that seriously and actually thinking that this is good. I'm a scatter. What do you do? Oh, I scat. I'm a scatter. Oh, yeah? Isn't that what also is like, a, isn't that like also like a shitting on someone's chest, scatting? Like in Germany? Or did I just totally make that up? Hey, you want to scat? Sure, I love scatting. Wee bitty beep. What are you doing? Oh, I'm shitting on your. I'm shitting on your chest. Scat is the scientific word for shit. Jesus, you want to go scatting? Oh yeah, I love it. Okay, cool. Come with me. Oh, why are we going in your bedroom? I'm going to shit on your chest. Whoa, whoa! I thought we were just going to do nonsense vocalizing. Ah, right, we can do that too. Go ahead. Go ahead. So go ahead. Say nonsense syllables. Get down here. Skip it up up. Skip it up up up. Oh boy. You have shit on your chest. Whoopsie daisy. You're scat singing. That's what you deserve. Shitting on your chest. Because that's nothing. You took everything about jazz, made it bad. There's books about scatting, probably, you know, like books. Uh, yeah, don't scat unless unless you're into shitting on someone's chest and you're German and they like it too. Then very cool. Very cool. Oh, man. Guess if I'm sweaty or not. Very sweaty. Uh, why don't we go uh, and look at some of these uh, hashtags, huh? Why don't we go and look at some of these fucking hashtags? Um, should we do Insta? I don't want. I don't really feel like doing Instagram. Most. Well, let me look at what I had. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I know some of you guys were upset. I didn't do Instagram post of the week. Most fucked up. Let me just go to the last one. I've been. Uh, Oh, you know what? Let's just talk about a blanket. You know what it's time for? The most fucked up Instagram post of the week. Uh-oh. The most fucked up Instagram post of the week. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So what I feel like is... Uh, here, here, well, let's just do this one. Um, here, here's, here it is. Now, the picture is of a female. She is in like a, a bodysuit. Covering her pussy with her hand, uh, even though I can't see it because it's a bodysuit. And uh, this is the caption. Sm- First of all, she's got a few a, a few tens, thousands of followers, okay? And so she thinks what she's saying is very important. Important. Smart impresses me. Strength of character impresses me. But most of all, I am impressed by kindness. Kindness, I think comes from learning hard lessons well, from falling and picking yourself up. I mean, what a bunch of fucking cocksucking bullshit this is. Oh, yeah, is that where you think kindness comes from? Oh, kindness comes from learning hard lessons well and falling and picking yourself up? Sounds like fucking boxing, you idiot. It it comes from surviving failure and loss. I mean, no, it doesn't. There's people who fail and lose that are complete fucking monger, like pieces of shit that are rude. And it implies an understanding of the human condition. No, it doesn't. 
forgives its many flaws and quirks. When I see that in someone, it fills me with admiration. Hey, nobody gives a fuck. You know, it doesn't matter. You, you, what you're saying, people don't look to you. The, the egotistical nature of that's what fills me with admiration. The egotistical fucking nature of that. That's what fills me with admiration. And you're not Tony Robbins. And Tony Robbins doesn't even do that shit. He's somebody with a few thousand Instagram followers. Bye. The whole fucking thing is ego, man. Um, yeah. Brutal. Brutal, brutal. Uh, let's go to some, uh, let's go to this fucking thing. You guys seen it yet? I want to see it. How much would it, would a fucking guy in, in high school think it's funny to say, have you seen it? And somebody would be like, what? And you'd be like, have you seen it? And he's like trying to play a joke on him, like, because that's what the movie is called. But he would say it like that so you wouldn't know. That would be some shit like somebody would do in my high school. And I'd be like, God, I hate this fucking guy. Have you seen it? Oh. Um, all right. Let's let's look at these. Congratulations. Let's see who's gaming the system, babies. Uh congratulations, Pod. Congratulations. Here we go. Nah, skip that one. Um, coolest. This is from Amanda at a walla underscore. All right. Coolest, lamest ways to die. My, it's funny she wrote lamest, you know, and not worst. Like, like who the fuck would die and be like, ugh, that was so lame. I guess lamest way to die would be like slipping and falling because that would be lame, right? But like worst, coolest, coolest way to die. I mean. With sunglasses on, you know, and having them stay on, even though you were fucking like, I don't know. I've been watching a little bit of Game of Thrones, and it seems like everybody like wants honor when they die. Fuck. No. Hey, you know, you know how many people shit themselves when they're killed? A lot. That's not honorable. E shit yourself. Lamest, worst ways to die. I always thought like, ugh. I mean, there's so many bad ones. Burned alive. Drowning. You know? Uh, yeah. Weird question, man. You know? Hey, Lifetime... Devin Demetio. De at Devin, Devin Demetio. Hey, Lifetime Baby here. I mean, you know, this podcast started 32 weeks ago. Lifetime Baby. Thoughts on people with hydraulics? On, in their cars, I suppose. Yeah. Um... I mean, I don't know, you know, everything in every culture has their show off shit. And like, if you're a, I guess, was it, was it like, I feel like it, like it was hip hop kind of shit that was doing the hydraulic stuff first. I mean, it's all stupid. All of the, it's kind of, at least it's like funny though, you know, to see a guy like, in his car while it's fucking bouncing up and down literally like really fucking hard and to think that he's in there going like <laughs> like snot gangster you know hell yeah and he's so sideways uh yeah i mean hydraulics i mean with the little wheels is so bitch too with the little wheels like the fuck um What else? Uh, what else? What's another one? What's that? What's that one? Go up. Oh, that that is gross, man. Bob Biggles at Biggles Bob. What do you think of people who eat bags and more bags of bacon beef jerky? Here's the thing, man. Are you, if you're eating beef jerky, you probably got it from a gas station, and you're on a road trip. What are you do? What do you do? What is that? That's not meat. It's not meat. I don't give a fuck. Uh, beef jerky out of a bag. Like, where is your life that you're eating beef jerky out of a bag? 
I remember when I was a kid and someone told me that some it was called beef jerky. I laughed for a long time. Jerky, you know? If I, put, don't put something jerky in your mouth. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, I obviously hate this. Ryan Birch at Ryan with an O. Um, how do you feel about people who refer to their favorite sports teams as we, like they play for the team? They're fucking betas. They're betas. See ya. You, 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 you're that, that you literally signed your life over to another man. You're, you're, you're one of those guys in Game of Thrones. That's like, I wish to serve you. May I serve you? That's you. you that's you. That's you. You're a guy with a bit part. That's you. Um, uh, look at this guy, Marty Barrick, at Marty underscore Barrick. When was the last time you were legitimately scared, be it for your life or maybe a spooky movie? Who the fuck says spooky movie? This guy can't be American. And he's from Los Angeles. Hey, don't say spooky. Um, uh, scariest movie I've ever seen was called... Um, I always forget the name. It was a Japanese horror movie. They remade it with Kristen Bell, I think. Uh, what the fuck was it called? Uh, look it up. They had this music on it that was... Uh, I always Because I always think of Purge. It's something like Purge, but it's not that, obviously. That was the Ethan Hawke shit. Um, but what? No, not that. It wasn't that. Um, not the grudge. Uh, but it had this music on it that was so scary. It's about like, and and the music would just be like this fucking note, this one little thing, pulse. That's what it's called. And it would go, mm, and that's it. But the Japanese version of pulse, mm, I, dude, I watched this fucking movie. And I, 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 I felt I was so scared. I felt it in my, in my, in my bowels. Like I literally felt like, oh, this is what it would be like to shit yourself. And and it it takes its time. And there are some wide shots that are so fucking scary. You know how in American cinema they'll do the scary things like bam, 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 and they'll show you real close. This shit, they'll do, it'll be like long shots. I guess is what the technical term or wide shot. I don't know wide shots of like scary shit of like people like ghosts walking towards you dude it's so scary i literally watched it i watched some of the parts with like i'd look at the side of the screen uh, side of the screen and fucking held up the fucking blanket i was watching it and and the music dude it's like mm, it was terrifying that's all it would do mm, I don't even know what I don't even remember what it was about anymore. By far the scariest movie I've ever seen. If that movie was scary at a 10, the next scariest movie I've ever seen was 7. That's how scary this fucking movie is. Watch it. Dude, that's my recommendation. Watch that movie. I don't know where you could probably gonna watch it on like some weird fucking app that you can only get in Japan, you know? It'll be on thing like my brother would be like, "Do you have the Scatter app?" He'd be like, "What?" I'm like, yeah, you can watch movies on the Scatter app. And I'm like, I'm not getting a whole fucking app so I can watch Eternal Fucking Sunshine of the Spotless Mind or whatever the hell it's called. Um. Anyway, yeah. Remember what I said when I was like, mm. it's so scary. It's so fucking scary. Mm. Pulse. Go look at it. And let me know. Watch it um, based on my recommendation. That's a cult. That's some cult duty. Watch it and then fucking get back to me. I want to know if you thought it was fucking scary too. And tell me what it's about too, like quickly, like in a synopsis. Because I don't really get it when I read the shit. Um, all right. Well, shit, man. I think that uh, we're going to wrap this up. You guys, um, I got some some stuff to mention here. Blue Apron. You got to check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash congrats. Remember that, blueapron.com slash congrats. Square Cash, have you switched yet? Download the free Square Cash app or IO, for iOS or Android now and do that uh, with me. Um, so yeah, uh, I've got some upcoming shows, pull those up. Uh, I, and if you haven't seen Man on Fire, that'd be great. 
go watch Man on Fire on Netflix if you haven't watched it. I don't know how you can call yourself a baby if you haven't watched Man on Fire yet. Um, but yeah, do that and share it with your friends. It'd be great. Uh, more and more people are watching it. It's awesome. Uh, my crowds are getting bigger and bigger on the road, which are awesome. I appreciate you coming out, everyone coming out and, and, and watching uh, a live show. See my new see my new material. Uh, uh, see my new material uh, uh, recent uh, recently uh, upcoming shows. So you can see that um, uh, this week I'll be in New Brunswick, New Jersey, uh, Boone, North Carolina. I'm coming up. Uh, I think that's a Appalachian State University. Yeah. Uh, then Char- Charlotte, North Carolina, Adelaide, Australia, Perth, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Columbus, Irvine. Oh, the, I'm sorry. Co- um, those were go up. Those were. Um, Brisbane was Australia. And then Columbus, Ohio, Irvine, California, San Jose, California. Get your tickets now. They're selling out uh, um, even far down. Like Irvine is tough to get tickets for. And San Jose, I noticed there were uh, a lot of them. And those are in December. So uh, there's a few tickets left. So do that. And um, rate and review and tweet me. Uh, Rate and review the podcast, please. That really helps. Tell your friends about it. Make your friends listen to it in the car. Uh, And... uh, Try to build this cult, man. Let's let's be the let's let's do it. You gotta listen to fucking. You gotta listen. You gotta you gotta you gotta help help me out here. Um, so uh, thank you, Crystalia.com or congratulationspod.com uh, are my websites. And tweet me, congrats pod, and also use the hashtag uh, hashtag congratulationspod. Thanks very much. Uh, you guys are the shit. Sayonara, my babies. Congratulations. Congratulations.